Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be playing with some new makeup I received, or actually bought, uh, from Lawless. This is a clean beauty brand, it's clean at Sephora, it's talc free, vegan, cruelty free, um, and I have been dying to get my hands on some of their products because if you guys know my makeup style, I love glam looks, but I also love clean beauty. And I think it's a big problem that a lot of these clean beauty brands make the assumption that makeup wearers who like clean beauty only want natural makeup looks. And it's really frustrating because I do, I love glam looks, but I also want clean beauty. Like that is really frustrating when you see these no makeup makeup looks on these um, clean beauty brand models, which is such a thing, and I do love that look too, but you're doing people a disservice to assume that women who love glam looks do not want clean beauty. You have to show the versatility of your products. That's a real shame that you are unable as a brand to show that, yes, we do these beautiful no makeup makeup looks, but yes, our products can also perform and give you a full pigment glam look like you see from all the other brands without using harmful ingredients. It's a big problem and I'm here to like advocate that clean can be glam. It's like one of the hashtags I use all the time on my Instagram. So anyway, um, that's part of the reason why when I kind of stumbled upon Lawless, I was very, very, very intrigued because Annie Lawless, the founder, she's a glam girl and I love it. Like I love that she loves clean beauty. She likes to be sexy. She likes to feel pretty, um, but she also loves makeup and there's nothing wrong with that. You should be able to love wearing makeup but also want clean beauty. Um, so her eyeshadows are intensely pigmented. They're long wearing. Her blushes and bronzers are very pigmented and long wearing as well. They're in very glam kind of colors. She also has this beautiful range of nude lipsticks and lip glosses. Like very much Stephanie. Like the line is small right now, but it's small and mighty. It's an indie brand. She's growing and I hope they continue to grow and more people take advantage that these products are clean, but yet also, you know, can be glam. So yeah, um, I've been using these products for a few weeks now. I've been nonstop sharing it on my Instagram stories because I love it. Like I said it at the end of this video, but if I were, were to have the money to create a clean beauty brand, it would be something like Lawless where the makeup was able to be super glam, but it's also freaking clean. And like, it's important. And we are important too. the women and men who like glam looks. We also want to have clean products. So this is my PSA to all you clean beauty brands out there. Even with beauty counter, I love my beauty counter products, but you know what? Their ads are always super natural and no makeup makeup. And there's a huge market of people. If your beauty, if your business is beauty, you need to be showing that your products can perform like makeup artists want. And I'm not just talking about editorial magazines and like soft glam, like soft natural looks, like bring the drama as well. Show the diversity of your products. That's all I wanna see is more diversity. I love no makeup makeup, but also show me the glam looks for the red carpet. So anyway, I think Annie Lawless has really nailed it with these products. I'm so excited to continue to try more from her. And I hope you guys really like this look and give it a try. And if you try any of their products, let me know in the comments and yeah, let's get to it. You know what, actually, I've been doing this thing where I'm filling my brows first, literally this last week, and I kind of like it, so we're gonna do that. Um, I've gone back to my tried and true Benefit brow products just to kind of switch things up. I've been using the Beauty Counter Pencil for a long time, and I love it, but, you know, I like to try other things. Um, and I've always loved my Benefit stuff, so I'm going to use my Benefit uh, Goof Proof Brow Pencil in shade two. This is almost done. I have to actually finish this up. That's another reason I've been using it. And I start from the tail and just gently work inward with lighter pressure as I go inward. And then I do it on the other side too because before I finish one brow, I wanna make sure I'm as even as I can. I find when I do my brows first, I get a more crisp look, like more defined. I might fast forward through this part because I feel like it can be a little slow. For me, in order to put my skin, my foundation on first, um, after getting brows done, I have to use concealer. I've actually been using a not clean concealer, the e.l.f. 16 hour, hour Camo Concealer. It's supposed to be a dupe for Tarte Shape Tape, um, but it's actually $6, so that's nice. 
I've been just kind of testing it out for people who want some um, Tarte Shape Tape action but don't want that price. It's pretty good, guys. I will say um, it's not clean, but, you know, I've been testing it out, and it is pretty good. And I'm just using a concealer brush from Sigma to carve out the brow, and this gives me like a border so when I'm blending my foundation out, I don't mess the brows up. And a concealer brush like this from Sigma is so key in carving out brows because it's synthetic bristles, so it doesn't absorb all the product. And also it's a flat like brush, so it really lets you carve out what you want to define. It's also really nice to do this when you're due to wax your brows and you're just a little behind. You can kind of clean your clean up your brows with concealer if you've never seen that before. All right, so from there I'm gonna use uh, Beauty Counters Foundation in Skin Twin 340. This is the lightest I've ever been in this foundation, but I have been seemingly liking it. So I'm gonna put one pump on my hand. This is a light medium foundation co uh, coverage, but I like it because it looks really skin-like. And since I am going for a kind of dramatic makeup look, um, I want my skin to have good coverage, but I want it to not look super, super heavy. And this formula, although it's lightweight, it's really buildable and it lasts really long. For a clean foundation that is not full coverage, it's not super matte, it has really good lasting power. So, I think I've seen reviews on this foundation saying, oh, it's no good, da, 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 da. You know, I think the problem with it is people maybe were sold it under false pretenses. Like, it's not full coverage, it is not matte. Like, I don't know who told you that it would be. So, perhaps maybe the people who are not liking it just didn't get it knowing what they were getting. Like, you're getting a light, medium coverage, natural finish foundation. That's what it is. They never said it was anything different. It's perfect for every day. It looks like my skin, but better. And that's all I can ask for in an everyday foundation. It evens things out. Now I'll go in with concealer to conceal and brighten. So going back in with this e.l.f. concealer in light beige to conceal the eye area. And then conceal my lovely acne scarring that I have from hormones all down here. A little on my lip area, I have some discoloration here, and then a little here on my forehead. And I'm just gonna use a beauty blender to blend this in. See, like this is what concealer is for, to, to can add coverage in those places you need extra coverage. I love good full coverage foundations, but you know, you can get a similar look without piling on heavy foundations by just doing it properly. Like using your foundation to cover up and even out the skin and then using the concealer to add coverage where you really, really need it. And it's just gonna give a much more natural look while still giving you full coverage. So, okay, now that that is done, I may add more concealer after, um, but for now I'm actually gonna get into the eyes. So. Uh, for this, we are obviously going to be using the Lawless Baby One eyeshadow palette. I have been playing with this for a couple weeks now, and I really have been enjoying it. So it's obviously an eight pan palette. It's only $25. I think that's a really great value. Um, if you look at this bottom row, it's going to give you a very neutral, everyday kind of an eye look with like the browns and the medium um, skin tones, but then we're gonna play actually on this row with this more like warm, berry, um, mauve -y kind of shadows and this copper shimmer shade over here. I really have loved how this is like brought out the warmth in my eyes and I think it's really pretty for the holidays as well. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, first things first, I'm gonna take uh, the Cover FX pressed powder to just, um, to dust a layer on the lids to prevent skipping because these shadows are extremely pigmented and a little goes a long way, especially with the darker shades. So it's important to prep your lids appropriately so you don't have a mess. Okay, now we are going to go in. I'm actually using 
but I know this comes together for $7.99. It's a blending brush duo, and that's what I'm gonna use today. It's so good. It's like super affordable, and I've really been enjoying using these for eyeshadow. Okay, so to start this look, I actually start with the purpley berry shade pinky one right here. Ooh, right here. And we're gonna blend that right through the crease. Kind of stamping it on first so it doesn't fly all over the place where I want the concentration of the color and then from there buffing it through the inner half and I kind of let it go all over the lid a little bit it's totally okay these are deep colors these are rich colors so just work your way up start soft because as you can see, a little bit goes a long way. But I got a ton of compliments on this eye makeup look the other day on my Instagram stories. And my friend was like, did you record it? And I said, no, I didn't even record it. She's like, you should have recorded it. So here I am recreating it. Adding a little bit more on this one. Oop, that's a lot. From there, I grab the red, and we're gonna pop a little bit of that, a little bit, right here in the outer corner again, just building up the intensity and that warmth. And this one, again, I'm okay taking it even more on the lid because it's just gonna keep the depth more concentrated. If I had this red going too high, it would just look um, like it wouldn't be building up properly. The point is we want the darker shades closer to the lash line. This is such a great palette for almost any eye color because with blues, it's a scary color. So, like I feel like you have blue eyes, you're like, ooh, but they're actually, it'll really contrast with your blue eyes. But what it does really nicely for green and brown eyes and hazel is it really pulls out warmth. And those little golden flecks we have, if you have brown, hazel, or green eyes, it's going to really play that up. And then I went in with the copper with my finger. So I'm going to take my finger, load it up, and press it onto the lid here. It's definitely a shadow that needs to be done with your finger. Even Annie Lawless, the founder, had said, I've watched so many tutorials, she said it was intended to be applied with the finger to pick up those little sparklies. So if you use a brush, you can get it to look nice, and especially if you foil it, so like if you apply it with the brush but then spray the brush with like um, a setting spray, you will get a more intense look for sure, but she recommends, you know, the creator of the palette to use your finger. Whatever's left on the brush, I'm just gonna blend out the uh, edges so it's nice and smooth. So I used the uh, first one again, smudge under the lashes here. Now I didn't con I didn't set under my eyes yet, so the color is really gonna stick very well. Make sure you connect the outer half. I think I used this brown actually. Looks like I used this brown yesterday, a dot of that. And deepen it up a little bit. Whoops, got my lashes in my eye. Okay. I am going to take my finger again and actually use the lightest shade just in the inner corner for a pop of brightness. Okay, now I do want to add a little more concealer under the eyes because I went a little light for me. I do like a good concealed under eye. Now just be careful with the Beauty Blender that you don't conceal up all that shadow that you just applied. But I am going to be using the Beauty Blender to kind of cut out the shadow there on the edge so it has a little bit more definition 
like go on an angle here and blend that out. Make sure the inner corners are nice and concealed where things can be dark. And now we can set. So to set, I'm going to use my Beauty Counter Translucent Setting Powder. This Beauty Counter Translucent Powder is really good for all skin types. I was nervous it was going to be very drying, but it's not. And it doesn't um, give like flash black and it doesn't darken the makeup. Have you guys ever tried like loose powders where like you apply it and it looks like it's brightening, but then it actually darkens your makeup? That is the worst. This is like an unsung beauty counter product. People do not talk about this enough. And it's actually a new packaging with a white cap. It's so pretty. Anyway, okay, now that that part of our skin is done, let's set the rest of the face. So I'm gonna go back in with my Cover FX um, Mineral Powder Foundation and just tap on the jawline, especially where I have my concealer and on the found and on the forehead to set it all down. Kind of let that do its thing and set down. What we're going to do right now is the eyeliner. So another not clean product, but one I've been trying out because I've been on the hunt for a, a brush tip liquid liner. I loved the Kat Von D liquid liner, but I remember it would run out really quickly and for the price point I was like not okay with that um, and then there is no clean beauty brands that make a brush tip pen eyeliner yet so I here I am using the Maybelline one which whatever um, this is the Maybelline New York hyper easy brush tip liner and it's even like a shaky pen it's super thin and it has a brush tip just like the Kat Von D one that many of us know and love that makes it so easy to do liquid liner and especially a wing so I'm going to apply this wing. Oh God, I don't know if I should do this on camera or not. Let's try and see what happens. So I do hold my lip, my lid a little bit, but the brush tip makes it so simple to lay it right on your lash line and just drag. And then wing it out a little bit. Like, how easy was that? Crazy. Okay, we're back. We got both of our liners on. How much does that bring the look together? Am I right? I know, it's crazy. I just wanna finish the eye look, but you need to do mascara before you finish the eye look. If you wanted false lashes, do those. I am not because I am a lazy. So I'm just using my always go-to Thrive Cosmetics. You know what I actually ordered, guys? You're going to be so excited, I bet. I ordered the Jones Road New Clean Beauty brand by Bobbi Brown. Her mascara. It's getting really good feedback from my clean beauty friends. So if Thrive Cosmetics mascara is not your thing and you are having struggles finding a clean mascara that gives you the drama you like, like me, this Jones Road one is giving me positive vibes. Let's warm up this face, right? Let the mascara dry and then we'll finish off the last little bits of it. Okay, what highlighter did I use? Oh, I think I used the Beauty Counter one. I did, okay, but we're actually gonna do bronzer first. So I have a bronzer by Lawless. This is the Summer Skin in Golden Hour. It's the lighter of the two bronzers. Been very much loving this, very much very much um it is talc free but it is really not powdery no fallout and very buildable so i love that and it's a nice neutral tone compared to like warmer bronzers from other clean beauty brands so i'm using this big chubby beauty counter giant fan brush i love this for bronzer and just gonna buff this on this is the lighter of the two bronzers but i prefer that because i do tend to go <laughs> heavy handed on my bronzing but to me, I'd rather mm, go heavy handed and then blend it out than, you know, go heavy handed with a dark bronzer and then you're like a monster. Okay. I like this brush because it's perfect for contouring because it can really get right here in that cheekbone area. Another underrated product from Beauty Counter are the brushes. Now it has to be the brushes that are the white bristles, 
with the navy handles. These are our newer ones and they're really nice. They're high-end brushes, like they're not cheapies. But um, I have a few now, I have three, and they're all really nice. Like I love the Sephora brand brushes. They're up there in that kind of a quality. So you are paying a pr prestige price for a reason. Okay, so there's the bronzer, right? Like no shimmer, just so you know. I don't know, I just really, really like this bronzer. Okay, from there we're gonna do blush. I bought um, the Lawless blush brush and I bought this duo for the holidays. It was on a Black Friday sale, 30% uh, off, by the way, the entire website, which is crazy. Um, but it comes with two blushes and a blush brush. Now, Annie Lawless created this blush brush because she wanted a synthetic bristle brush that performed like a real hair bristle, bristle brush. So this brush is vegan and cruelty free, but it feels like a real hair, hair bristle brush. So this blush duo is meant to be used together. And I picked these peachy colors because hello, this is my life. Um, this is actually supposed to be Annie Lawless's favorite combination. I have a very similar skin tone to her with the same kind of like brown eyes. Like her skin tone and makeup color preferences are very similar to what I normally gravitate towards. So um, I picked her favorite set to try this formula out and did not disappoint. So how you're supposed to use this is take the lighter brush blush first and kind of just blush yourself as normal and then use this deeper tone to kind of like pop the apples of your cheeks for a little more life. The blush brush in amazing. I hope she makes more br brushes because these are really nice. Um, and the blushes, just like the bronzer, highly impressed with this formula. It melts into the skin. There's no kick up or fallout. Very layerable. Like I cannot ask for anything more. It's crazy. Like you can tap, tap, tap in and there's nothing, nothing coming out. Like look, my around the pan, there's no fallout. It's amazing, a very good quality. And this blush brush is amazing because you can just tap, tap, tap your color on. So I'm very happy with the powders, particularly. I mean, I love, I'm pretty much impressed with everything I've tried so far, but um, really the powders have stolen the show for me. But do you see, like I can layer and layer and layer and it's not getting really insane looking. And now I'm gonna take Phoenix, which is the starker one, and just take a little and pop it kind of right here, like as if I got like a little sunburn. I know it looks crazy. I'm gonna soften it out in a little bit. Now, highlighter. I used this, I feel bad using this limited edition beauty counter one, but this is, I think all the holiday sets are sold out right now. I don't know what to do. This is limited edition from beauty counter winter warmth duo. It's like a rose gold highlighter. And I just popped this on here. just for a subtle shimmeriness. And as per usual with my makeup on my skin, I kind of blend it all out with the Hourglass Luminous Light Powder. This just kind of softens and blurs everything together so there is no intense lines and my skin just kind of looks lit from within. Yet it doesn't leave me looking like a glitter bomb. So for the eyes, to finish this off before we do the lips, I go back into the palette and I use this very specific, here it is, um, eyeshadow brush that I cannot go without because I have semi-hooded lids. And I hope they still make this because if you have semi-hooded lids, you need this brush. This is a MAC 221. It is a narrow blending brush. So for example, this, no, that's not a good one. Hold on. Tell me it's... Here is a MAC 224. This is a very iconic brush. It's your standard tapered blending brush. This is the 221. It is like half the size and it's more narrow. The white one is what we're gonna use to add darkness right in this crease, very concentrated, because if I did it with this big fluffy one, too much color, it's gonna go everywhere. It's gonna really just darken the entire look up and that's not what I want. So what I'm gonna do is take a little dot of this darkest purple, just a tiny bit, tap it out and hold my brush all the way on the edge for um, the lightest hand and tap it right here in the crease, almost where like the edge of the wing ends, okay? 
to just give some definition to this look. See? Compared to this eye. I mean, this is pretty. This gives more of the purpley berry tone. So I kind of am looking like I'm going right on my brow bone. I can feel the bone, the eye socket bone. And I'm attaching it almost to where that wing ends. And I'm only going about halfway, like right past the arch of the brow. Whatever's left, I kind of just go underneath a little bit. Look, let's finish up the lip. I do actually feel like I want to hit more blush. Is that crazy? Maybe I should wait till the lip is on. Okay, so I actually do have her gloss in Annie. And I have two lipsticks, but I'm going to use this one today, Fawn. Um, so the two lipsticks I got was in Child, which is super nude. I got this lipstick to have as a clean beauty option to like really brighten and lighten up any kind of other lipstick I'm wearing. It's very pale. Like, it's a very concealer lippy for me. That's Child. I think it's the lightest one she makes. Um, Fawn is what I'm going to wear today, and this one is the one I got recently, and I love it. And it's much more wearable. So that's Fawn, the darker one, and Child is on the other side. However, we are also gonna apply lip liner. And for that, I go back to my classic Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk. Cannot go without this. Okay, once the lip liner's on, I like to blend it in. Cause I don't want to have that 90s look where you can really see the lip liner. I don't know, it's just not my thing. And then we're going to take Fawn Lipstick, which is like a warm honey nude is what it's called, I believe. It's my preferred kind of a nude. I love that kind of a nude. So they have kind of a little bit of a vanilla taste. Slightly drying, but like to me, they're not going to dry my lips out. They're just not moisturizing. They just kind of are, are there. <laughs> But then, so you can leave it like that, right? If you like lip, more of a matte lippy. What I'm gonna do is blot once just to get rid of the excess. And for the purpose of showcasing the color, I'm gonna top with a little bit of the Annie Gloss. These glosses are really intense. They're like glossy lipsticks, like the Anastasia Beverly Hills glosses, where it's not sheer. They're like very pigmented. And it's like a pinky peachy nude. All right, now that the lip is on, I feel comfortable adding a hint more blush, I think. I think. In real life, I look okay, but I feel like on camera, I don't know. Let's add like a little to the forehead, maybe. All right, I think that's pretty. Okay. So that is my look using the Lawless products. What do you guys think? I'm obsessed with the fact that this is a cleaner brand and that she, the founder Annie, is like a glam girl herself. Like there is a huge lack in this market for glam clean beauty. It's a real shame that these brands think that the only people who like clean beauty are those that don't like to wear a lot of makeup. Like, there is a whole market of us beauty people that love makeup but want to use cleaner products. Um, so I'm so happy that Annie founded this company. There needs to be more from her and more love on this line. Like, I'm really happy. So the eyeshadows, obviously very intensely pigmented, lasts all day. Like I wore this for the last couple weeks, all different color combinations. It's wearing wonderfully. Um, really, really pretty. For the price, you can't beat it. $25 for a palette. Um, the bronzer, top notch. I love how easy it is to blend and how natural it looks on the skin. Blush is also incredible formula, like no fallout for talc free. It's crazy. Um, and then the lippies, I love that she made a whole range of nude lipsticks. That is also very hard to find in clean beauty right now. Like, I don't know what it is, but like not, there's no brands that are making that many nudes in clean beauty with the exception of probably Bite Beauty. I think they might be the only ones, right? Um, but Beauty Counter doesn't have a ton of nudes. Kosas has one nude. Ilya's nudes are not nude enough. Like they're just lacking. So she has a whole range for all different skin tones. Um, 
I just have nothing to complain about. If I was to create a beauty brand and had the money to make my own clean beauty brand, it would be lawless. Like she's just nailed my aesthetic of like clean can be glam. And I hope you guys give this brand a shot and let me know what you think. So, all right, bye.